Hello there, third hour. So as you're watching uh, this video, I'm sure that you are either stuck at home or just need to catch up on a little bit of what you missed as we've been writing our essay in class. I am here live with our third hour class. Everyone say, hey. hey. They, they can't see you, Asita. So they can only see my screen. So I'm sure you guys can can hear that from there, which is great. Um, they're writing it live with me. Um, so they're kind of following along in their line paper. If you do have to do this at home, uh, make sure that you have your line paper out because I do want you to handwrite this essay. So far, all I've done is centered a title for our essay. All four of my classes have different thesis statements, so I'm trying to get creative with our titles. There is one more thing we'll want to do before we start writing our introduction, and let's give this boy a heading. Now, headings in MLA are a little bit goofy. So upper left-hand corner, just like we're doing up on screen, I would also note for those of you with me in person, there is an example heading over Louie's head on the whiteboard back there. My laser is not working right now. Um, but you'll notice upper left hand corner, it goes student name, my name, the course, and then the date. I'll put that up on screen for you guys too. So, student example. Use your own name, don't call yourself student example. Upper left hand corner. Normally, I don't do the, the hour for courses, but because I have four different classes, I want to designate that. And then the date. For those of you watching this on video, um, please know that I will have to, to um, designate some time for my students in class to catch up. Um, at any point, you can pause this video if you need to, to go a little bit more slowly as you copy down as well. What we've done so far is our heading. In MLA, we do upper left-hand corner of your page. It goes student name. Don't call yourself student example. Use your actual name there. Teacher name goes second, then the course, and then the date. MLA is really picky about dates. I really don't care what date format you choose. They like date, then month, then year. And then the title is centered right above our first paragraph. Normally, I would ask you to write your own creative title. But since we're writing this essay together, we'll just use this one. To start our first paragraph, we'll need to go down to the next line and indent. I'm kind of curious to hear from you guys. Does anyone in here know a good trick for indenting on paper? Yes, sir. Yeah, Taylor. Yeah, I usually use one or two fingers. Two gives you a, a wider indent. You just place it right on the line and then start your first word. Um, just right at the end of your fingers. On computer, all I have to do is hit tab. There is one formatting thing I need to do on screen that you guys won't do on paper, and it's spacing. Um, whenever you're typing an essay, double spacing makes it a lot easier to read. But when you're writing up by hand, single spacing is fine. You don't have to skip lines in between every single line on paper. But I'm going to hit two for double spacing here. And then what do I do? Yep, start writing. But wait, a, the nice thing is that we've already written this thing. It's just in our outline. So I have the benefit of being able to copy paste. I know you guys don't. So I'll be pausing periodically to give you guys time to catch up in handwriting. For me, for me, since we've already done all the heavy lifting for this essay, all I have to do is this, Control-C on my outline. All I'm doing, since I copy-pasted straight from my outline, is I'm getting rid of some of this extra garbage. There we go. And once again, I know that my students in person need time to, to follow along and copy. So this could be a good time to pause the video if you need to copy by yourself. Um, I am going to read this paragraph out loud just to see if there's anything we want to change as we write. Food, violence, cheating, drugs, and alcohol are all temptations that people deal with. One story that focuses on temptation is, we actually need to spell it out right here. Just because it's the first time we used it. One of the characters, the White Witch, tempts Edmund with Enchanted Turkish Delight. There is a sentence that I added in parentheses right there that we just need to decide if we want to leave it in or not. I'll highlight it. It says, this curses him, and he needs to be rescued from the witch. Let me just ask my in-person class, is this a sentence we want to leave in or take out? Let, let's maybe put this by a vote right here. I'll, I'll read the paragraph out loud so you can kind of hear it with it there. Um, 
We'll do this by a vote, just majority rules on whether we leave it in or take it out. Food, violence, cheating, drugs, and alcohol are all temptations that people deal with. One story that focuses on temptation is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. One of the characters, the White Witch, tempts Edmund with enchanted Turkish delight. This curses him, and he needs to be rescued from the witch. The theme of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is that faith in Jesus Christ saves people from temptation. C.S. Lewis uses symbolism to bring out this theme. I'll be the tiebreaker right there, and I'll decide that we are leaving it in. I just got to get rid of the parentheses. There is one more thing I would change, though. We've already mentioned the title in the earlier in the paragraph, so we can probably change it right here. The theme of this story is that faith in Jesus Christ saves people from temptation, that the rest is fine from there. So. I do know that it's hard to do italics in handwriting. Um, generally, what I would do is just underline there. I'm going to scroll a little bit past the title so I can at least start our body paragraph right here. If you're still copying the introduction, that's fine. Please let me know if I'm going way too fast. But I do want to at least get started with our body paragraph. One thing I would say for you guys, too, as you're copying down, there's no need to skip any lines when you move on to the next paragraph. As long as you indent, notice that I've got some space between my, my full margin and where I'm starting right here. That's how I can tell that we're starting a new uh, paragraph. All I'm going to do for now is put my topic sentence in there. Just got to go to our outline. And we said we started with Lucy and Edmund first. So what we have up there is our introduction and our first topic sentence. I'm going to leave that up for a little bit. Um, I want to make sure I'm not going way too fast for you guys to stay along with me. Third hour, is it okay if I scroll down a bit and add in our evidence, or should I wait a little bit longer? Yes. Move on? Yeah. Okay. I'll still leave those last few sentences of the intro open. I just need a little more space. Let's do that. So we said the characters Lucy and Edmund are two important symbols in the story, and now I'm just going back to our outline. Looks like you guys came up with some good evidence and commentary, so I just have to copy it in. Once again. I do know that copy-pasting is infinitely easier than handwriting, so that's why I'm giving you guys a lot of time to copy along. I just got to get rid of some of this garbage, and now I can just get rid of some of the stuff that I don't need here. So I can get rid of this little block. Oop. That's a good paraphrase. Bye-bye commentary. Our block of evidence and commentary about Lucy put it right there. Here's what we said so far. The characters Lucy and Edmund are two important symbols in the story. Again, this is our first body paragraph, so make sure this is separate from your intro. On page 55, Lucy forgives her siblings when they apologize about doubting her story. That's a great paraphrase you guys came up with. Her ability to forgive others shows that Lucy is a faithful person. Not only does she forgive Mr. Tumnus too, but she also has complete faith that Narnia is real. Lucy is a symbol of faith. Very good. I'm just going to check something in our outline real quick. If I remember right, I think I need to do some digging, right? We decided that we're going to find a direct quote that illustrates Edmund's sinfulness or lack of faith. I have, I've got a book up here, so I will look for that for you guys as you're copying. So let me put this back up here. I'll pop that there. Let me dig through the text a little bit here. Let's see if I can find a direct quote for Edmund. However, I'm using however as a little transition right there. Um, now I'm going to include a direct quote I found on page 43. Edmund, however, um, was already more than half on the side of the witch. Did they capitalize witch there? Yeah. One thing I'm doing right here, because I wanted us to use a direct quote, is I still have to cite it. I'm going to include its page number at the end of that citation. 43. The period goes after that uh, that page number there. I do know that we that we used page 55 before, and it feels like we're going backwards. But it actually works for this paragraph decently. Yes, sir. Is it all right if I scroll down a little bit? Yeah. Is anyone still copying that last bit of introduction? The characters Lucy and Edmund are two important symbols in the story. On page 55, Lucy forgives her siblings when they apologize about doubting her story. Her ability to forgive others shows that Lucy is a faithful person. Not only does she forgive Mr. Tumnus too, but she also has complete faith that Narnia is real. Lucy is a symbol of faith. 
Edmund, however, was already more than half on the side of the witch. One thing that's important there, as you guys are copying down, don't forget quotation marks. We are using a direct quote right here. I want you to know how to, how to punctuate that. When I cited it, all I did was I put the page number in parentheses. Notice that the period goes after the parentheses there. It's called a citation. And all that's left is to add some more commentary, which we did not outline already. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to kind of freehand this. If we have to edit it later, that's totally fine. Um, unlike Lucy and, uh, I'll just list them all right there. Unlike Lucy, Peter, and Susan. Um, Edmund maybe is selfish. Let's see. Edmund is, is selfish and wants maybe power over his siblings. He um, is maybe described as being spiteful. Come in. Um, let's see. He's described as being spiteful and represents and he represents. Let's see, we said Lucy's a symbol of faith. Is there a good thing that we should say that, that uh, Edmund represents? Maybe the opposite of faith? Is Does he represent sin itself? He maybe represents sinful people, right? He is described as being spiteful and he re represents maybe sinners. Yeah, I think that works better. Let me read this back out loud just to make sure this paragraph works. The characters Lucy and Edmund are two important symbols in this story. On page 55, Lucy forgives her siblings when they apologize about doubting her story. Her ability to forgive others shows that Lucy is a faithful person. Not only does she forgive Mr. Tumnus, too, but she also has faith, complete faith, that Narnia is real. Lucy is a symbol of faith. Edmund, however, was already more than half on the side of the witch. Unlike Lucy, Peter, and Susan, Edmund is selfish and wants power over his siblings. He is described as being spiteful, and he represents sinners. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. What do you guys think? It's fine? Okay. Do we need more commentary there, or should I move to our summary sentence? Okay. I think that's the last thing I have to, cap to copy there together. Oh yeah, we did say sinfulness before. That's that's body paragraph one. You'll notice in your outline that we still have one more body paragraph in our conclusion to do. If we can get started with the next one, we will, but I want to make sure I'm not going too fast for you guys. Friendly reminder, for those of you following online, feel free to pause the video at any point for the sake of copying. We are going to, to add more to this essay tomorrow, especially. By the way, I'm hoping we'll have some time tomorrow to proofread. So if there's anything we want to change later on, we can. Notice that I did not skip any lines right there. I just go on to the immediate next line and it already indented for me. I just want to get my topic sentence going here. What did we say next? We're talking about Aslan and the witch, right? We might as well start our next body paragraph. Why not? Notice that this is a new paragraph, so be sure that you're moving on to the next line. Make sure you're indenting as well. I will say, for those of you watching this virtually right now, let me get back to this thing. I will say, for those of you watching this virtually, um, once again, sorry about that. Once again, feel free to pause this video at any point. Go back to earlier sections to copy down what you need. We're going to wrap up our essay in class tomorrow. Everyone say peace. Peace. Later, y'all.